Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video in the eHoudini Academy Foundation module. In this video, we are going to continue working on our staircases where we left off last time and finish up our staircase steps. So let's get back into Houdini and let's finish this one up. Okay, so that will deal with our steps. And now we only have one more element to build before we can start adding these guys together. So um, for that, let's go over here to the right and let's start working on our back turn. So for the back turn, what we want to do is first create a circle at the back of our staircase. Because as you might recall, our back turn is basically just a circle that's been cut and has a certain amount of divisions. So let's create a circle sop. So let's set this one over to a polygon type over here. And this will create a polygon shape for us. I'm going to change it over to a ZX plane. So it lies flat on the ground. And at the moment it's oriented in the um, upside down position, which is fine because ultimately I do want to extrude this thing down just like the others. Then I want to set it up so it's a sliced arc, which will add subdivisions into the shape. And then let's put it into place. So for this one, I can simply grab the back turn position from over here, this transform. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to paste it over here in the center X position. And that will put it where the back of our back turn is supposed to be. All right. Then next, what I would like to do is um, take a delete node and I want to cut away half of this shape. So let's grab a delete node, plug it in below, and I'm going to call this one cut in half. And then let's go to the number tab, go to operation and say delete by range. And by default, it's going to delete every other primitive on this shape, just like the group by range node. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first change it over to delete non-selected and then I want to select all of my primitives so that will be one and one right now it's selecting the entire range from zero to the maximum amount of primitives so right now this node is not deleting anything at all because everything is being selected and delete non-selected means that it's going to keep everything now I'm going to take this code and I'm going to say dollar sign n times 0 0.5 minus 1 and that's basically going to take all of the primitives divide that by half and then reduce that by 1 so it will select half of our primitives and the other half will be cut away now because I'm always going to have an even amount of divisions so not an uneven amount but an even amount this will always work. Then let's go back to our circle here. I'm going to rename this one to back turn. And um, I'm going to set this up so it's rotated in this direction, negative x. Let's take our rotation value and let's set this one to 90 degrees. So now it's pointing that way. Now this is still too small for our back turn because ultimately this is going to be the surface and the steps of my back turn so I need to scale this thing up first let's take our grid scale over here and link it up to the radius in X so we have this thing always scaled up in width based on the grid scale let's grab our parameters again go to our elevators and staircases tab and copy the interior grid scale. And let's plug it in under radius X. Then for the depth, um, I'm simply gonna take the stairwell back turn depth, that is this depth here, and multiply it by two. So that should be enough. Over here, stairwell back turn depth, copy that, plug it in here, and multiply 
by two. So now it encompasses this shape and depending on the size of our grid, it's gonna scale along. So it should always fit. And if I take my back turn, it will stretch along as well. So this will always overlap this side of our staircase. Now there's still one thing we need to deal with, and that is if we change the width of our unit. If we make this wider, you see that our back turn is not scaling along. So we also need to make sure this scales as well. Now in order to fix this issue, we have two options here. Either we can scale the uniform scale, which will scale this object uniformly. And if we hook that up to our width, then as we increase the width, it also increases the size of our back turn and it keeps the slices in the original position, which works fine, except that now it will slice more towards the center and less over here on the sides. On the other hand, we can also decide to plug it up over here under our radius in X. If we multiply that value with the width, then as we increase it, we simply scale this object along in the width, keeping the original steps in the same radial pattern, no matter its size, no matter its position. I will leave it up to you how you decide to do this. If you want to use this pattern for the steps, then be my guest. Personally, I am going to use the uniform scale. So I will simply scale this thing up uniformly and keep the pattern more towards the center. Okay, now there's only one last thing that we need to do, and that is to determine how many steps we actually want in our back turn. Now I don't want too many steps. In fact, I don't want more steps than 10, and I don't want less steps than six. And I'm still gonna bind this to the actual floor height. Let's um, set this up and then we'll go over what it does. Over here under divisions, let's hook in our floor height first. So let's grab floor height over here and let's plug it in under divisions. And then let's multiply this by two because of course we are cutting it in half. So we need to have more steps, double the amount of steps. So we always have an even number. In this case, we now have 12 steps. But the problem is that if we go too high with our floors, once again, we will have too many steps in our back turn, and I don't want that. So let's quickly have a look what happens if we set this one to a value of, say, 10. Let's make our building floors higher, right? As a result, we'll have more cuts, and that means we'll have more steps. Let's go ahead and limit this so it will never go more than 6. In this case, I'm going to use a modulo expression. So I'm going to take my floor height here, use the percentage symbol to indicate a modulo operator. And then I'm going to wrap this inside brackets. So this gets executed first. Now what that will do is we'll basically take our floor height and every time it gets up to six, it's going to return it back to zero. Now at the moment that will work fine because at this moment it's returning a value of eight right, which when cut in half gives us four steps. But I don't want to mess with this when we get to a value of say six, because then it will return zero and we can't multiply by zero. So it will give us the minimum value, which is one primitive. Let's not do that. To prevent this from happening, let's wrap this inside of a clamp expression. And I'm going to clamp it between six and 10 steps, like so. Now, at the very least, if we have a very low value, um, we won't have zero steps, we'll have three steps. So what this will do is we'll basically take the amount of steps and as we increase our floor height to say 10, for example, it's going to set it up to four. If we go up to 11.5, then it will give us five steps. Now, if you want to mess with this equation, then be my guest, but I'm not going to set it too high. I don't want this to be too wild. 
So this will do it for me. However, there's still one issue we need to deal with. If we lower this value down to something below, say, 6, let's say um, 3.5 here, we could end up with a value like 7. And that's not an even value. So for that, I'm going to take this. I'm going to wrap it inside of a seal expression, divide by 2, and then I'm going to multiply that by 2 again, like that. As a result, if this value is a value like 7, it will divide it by 2, raise it up to the highest integer, and then it will multiply by 2 again. So a value of 7 becomes 8, 5 becomes 6, 3 becomes 4, etc. In that case, we should now have proper steps, and that will work for our cut in half section here. Okay. So with that, we have our back turn set up. Let's um, go to our elevators and staircases and return this thing back to a size of one by two. And then let's continue on. So next, um, let's set up over here our steps again. So we have our step height. For this one, we can simply copy the entire section over here, that part, paste it over. And just to make sure it is hooked up to our step height, so that's fine. And then let's take this and offset it up. So with that, we should now have our steps a little bit raised above the grid. And if we increase the amount of floors to say five, then now we'll have more steps and more height. That's the reason that I don't want this to be too high, right? Okay, so next, um, let's give these things some depth. And for that, I'm going to use another extrude and texture node. Let's copy this one. Plug it in here. And that already seems to work okay. But we're not quite there yet. Because basically, what I want to do is extrude all these down by just one step height, for starters. So it looks like that. Okay, so now that we have this extrusion, let's um, make some adjustments. So if we look at the bottom, then what I want to do is grab all these primitives and pull them down. Now, I do notice that I forgot to set the um, texture on the bottom of these, so we still need to actually make an adjustment for that. In fact, I think it's still set on every single object to use the floor texture, and I don't want that. So let me quickly grab all of these nodes, go to the texture tab, and then I'm going to go to the top UV section. And I'm going to change my preview top texture to concrete wall, the Unreal Material texture to concrete wall, and for its texture scale let's set this to 5 and 5. Now that will adjust all of these at the same time. But do keep in mind that if you make any other changes while you have multiple nodes selected, it will apply it to every single one of them. And we don't want to do that. So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, so with the texture corrected, let's move on. Um, over here, under my extrude node, since we are extruding downward, we have our groups over here. What I want to do is change my groups around so the bottom is the top and the top is the bottom like so so now if we look at our groups if i look at the bottom here we go we now have bottom over here on the bottom and we can now grab that let's create a transform node and if i plug that in and i say um, flatten to bottom Grab the bottom group and scale this down to zero. Watch what happens. Everything will collapse down. And that's because um, this node here has fused those points together. That's the behavior from this node here, the uh, merge overlaps. And we do want to have that behavior. 
But unfortunately, that causes some issues for us because when we originally extruded these, we extruded them to the exact step height. As a result, all their points are now overlapping. And when we extruded them, it will fuse them all together. And when we then pull all these primitives down, it pulls the vertices as well. So we don't want that behavior, right? Now to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to process each one of these in a loop. So each one will be extruded separately, so they won't have the chance to fuse. Let's grab a for each loop by primitive. Let's plug this in. And if we look at the end result, now they should no longer be um, fused. And it will simply pull down every single primitive to the bottom, like that. Now, next, let's quickly make an adjustment here so these textures don't um, have the same repeating pattern as they go up the stairs. So that's the same thing we did over here with our offset side projection. Let's copy this node, and I'm going to plug it into the loop. Now, if I do this, what we have right now is a primitive number-based UV offset. And the problem with that is that this won't make any difference because every loop is going to process its own primitive. And as a result, the primitive numbers will always be the same. So the offset is always going to be the same. So to fix that, we need to actually check the loop that we're currently in and multiply by that. So I'm going to grab from the top of my for each loop a new begin block. So let's click over here on create new meta import node. And then this one will give us the current iteration number right there. So we can plug this into our node here as a second input. And then let's add this to our wrangle script. So over here, I'm going to add this into a new integer local variable. Let's say um, iteration equals detail one for the second input then the iteration detail attribute with index zero and with that we are now retrieving the current iteration so we can then take that and multiply that with the primitive number now that should work basically we are now for every single step applying a different offset and if we look at our UVs, this should work properly, because if we look at that, then the yellow bar here, our side UVs, should now be offset independently for every one of these. Okay, so with that, if we then apply this over to the end, we now have proper UVs for our steps. All right, so next let's set up the um, block so we can cut out this shape from our back turn over here. So if this is our back turn, then I don't want this um, staircase shape here to be any bigger than that size, than that shape. Let's grab our back turn over here, pull it over to the right, and I'm going to pull a line from this one. Unlike the other ones over here on the left, I'm not going to create a unique grid for it. I'm just going to pull a line. Then let's create a divide node. I'm going to turn off convex polygons, remove shared edges. And this will just leave me with a primitive with some points on it, even the ones in the middle, right? Then I'm going to grab a poly extrude and texture node. So that would be a node from over here. Let's grab this one here for the stair steps. Copy that. Now at the moment, this one is extruding down. So I'm going to take this expression and delete it. And let's give it a height of one for now. Now what I would like to do is take this shape and intersect it with our current staircase. 
and then what's left what's inside both of these will be kept so let's create a um, boolean intersect node plug it in over there and i'm gonna grab my node here on the left for my spiral staircase i'm gonna add a null node here now we'll call this one spiral steps and let's plug that one into the first input. Then over here on the right, create another null node. Let's call this one spiral cut block. And plug that into B. So the reason I'm doing this is just so we have a clear representation of what is being cut from what, because we need to add some extra code here in a minute. I'm going to call this one um, cut spiral stairs. Now at this moment, this is working, but that's only because we have a fixed value of one. If this goes any lower, then we're basically reducing the amount of steps. We're basically cutting away the step height and that's not something I want. So we need to set this one to the correct height. For that, um, let me set up a bounding box expression and I want to reference my step height over here. Let's create a null node. Let's plug that in. I'm going to call this one um, spiral height. Let's reference that. And then in here under extrude depth, Let's type bounding box. And I'm not gonna use a spare input here because this is a asset. And the moment I save this asset, it's gonna try and delete my spare inputs. I don't want to deal with that. So instead, I'm just gonna create a standard expression link here. Dot dot slash spiral height. And then D underscore Y max. That will grab the maximum position in height from our shape, give us the exact height we need. So now that we have this cut out, we can sort of see what the shape is going to be like, right? So if I look at my actual template for where this is located, this should then connect to the other staircases. But if we look at the other staircases, well, you can see they have more depth than this part here will allow. And that means I kind of want to extrude this part down further by two step heights in order to make this connect better. If I look at my example file, you can see what I mean. Let's say I look over here. See how this block here on the side is deeper and connects properly to this staircase. But over here on the other end, it actually has this cut in. So I want to go ahead and set that up next. Now to do this, we actually need to extrude our staircase down a bit deeper. And then I want to cut out the other side here with a separate block. But to make sure we have proper UVs on this end, we also need to play a little trick in our for each loop as well on the last iteration. So we get a proper UV over here. So let's go back and let's do this step by step. First, we need to lower the bottom of our extrusion here so that means we need to lower this one down by two step heights. So let's grab our step height, copy that, and then plug it in over here under translate Y. I'm going to take this, say negative our step height times two. So that will extrude it extra far, right? So it properly will connect with our steps over here. But the problem is that our intersect cutting here is going to get rid of that again because this shape hasn't been scaled yet. So let's add a transform node up here as well. Plug that in. I'm going to name this one um, offset down shape. And then we need to set its offset. So over here on the left, we have our flatten to bottom node. Let's copy its translate Y channel. 
go back to this offset down shape and plug it into its translate y. So we're just doing the same thing, right? Offsetting both down. Now to make sure that our extrusion is big enough so we don't cut out the top now, we need to then say minus our relative reference of that value. So just copy this one and plug it in here like that. So now this box will be big enough and our extrusion, our cut will be correct. All right, so that's one problem that we dealt with. Um, next, let's deal with the cutout for the bottom. Because right now we do have this here, but this will be something the player will bump their heads into. And I don't want that. So I want to create another block that we can cut out at grid level, right? So over here. Um, and for that, let's create a new grid. And we're going to call this one back turn um, half cut. Now this is going to take the size of our cut in half shape here. So let's take this and make it two by two. And then I'm going to create a link. So let's create a spare input. Grab cut in half. Plug that in. And as for its expression, let's say bounding box negative one D underscore X size. Then for the second value, let's say Z size multiplied by 0 0.5. That will give us half of the size of this back term. And then I want to position it. So let's type centroid negative one D underscore X that will position it in the middle. And then I want to move it over to the left. Now for that, we can simply take the size in Z or the second size here, copy that, paste it into the center Z value, and then multiply that by 0 0.5. And that will position it nicely over on this side. Pretty neat. All right, so now let's give it a bit of depth. Let's go over here to the left. Let's um, copy these notes here, our reverse and our extrude and texture landing. Plug that in here. And as for its offset, let's go back here to our flattened to bottom, copy this transform, and let's plug it up here. That should give us a negative value times two the step height. So with that, um, we should have a correctly shaped block. Let's grab a Boolean subtract node. Plug that in. And then we can cut that part from the bottom. So we actually have a little bit of head space as we go down the stairs, right? As the player progresses down the stairs below, He's going to have a bit of headspace here, so we won't bump into that. Now, at the moment, this will work for the player, but the UVs still aren't quite right. And I also have some um, triangulation that's being transferred. So let's make sure that we turn off any and all of these triangulate results. So including the one over here and the one we copied it from. Let's also turn that one off. So with that, That should all be fine. And then I just want to fix the UVs over here, because if we look at that, this looks a bit bad, right? What I want to do is to have the UVs start at the bottom of this, because this will be visible. Because if we go and look in Unreal, and we look at this part of the staircase, you will notice that what I want is to have my concrete bars texture start right at the bottom of this cut. And right now, that's just not the case. Right now, it's as if it was stretched and then sliced right down the middle. To fix that, what I want to do is take the bottom of the last piece that we extruded, that is this piece, and raise it up before we start cutting into it. 
And we can do that using a transform node. So let's grab one. And I'm going to call this one raise last step bottom. Now we do need to actually identify what the last step is. And right now we don't have a way to do that. I can select maybe primitive 21 and then raise that one up manually. And that will work, right? But uh, I still need to identify this primitive. So up here inside of our loop, I'm simply going to identify the last loop that we ran, which would be the highest loop, right? So in this case, that's going to be primitive four. I'm going to create a new wrangle node inside here. Plug it in like so. So we grab the current metadata again. So let's go in here and let's name this one group last step bottom. So in this node, what I need to do is grab the iteration number for my metadata. I also need to grab the maximum number of iterations. And then if those are the same, or at least if the last iteration is um, being extruded, I want to group that bottom part as a separate group. So I want to create a new group for just the bottom of this last primitive. That's pretty simple, but let's do it step by step here. Over here, let's set this over to primitive mode. Then I'm going to type um, integer idd for iteration equals detail one for input one. Let's grab the iteration attribute and then index zero, right? Then let's copy that. And then below, I'm going to say iteration number, right? So the maximum number of iterations. And for that, we need to grab the number of iterations. So that is the detail attribute num iterations over here. Let's grab that. But the number of iterations is actually higher than the current iteration number. If you can see here, the last iteration that it ran had iteration four with the number of iterations at five. So we need to subtract this by one. Let's grab our number of iterations and say minus one. So now these should line up. So th in that case, if we say if itt is equal to it num, then we want to group it. So let's type at group underscore to specify a group. And then I'm going to say last step equals one. So this will write out a group with value one last step if this condition is true. Now, in this case, this is going to group the entire block. So I only want to apply this to our bottom group. And now we have our last primitive here grouped as last step. So let's go to our transform node here, our raise last step for the bottom. Let's select under our group last step. And then I just want to make sure I translate this one up to the correct height. Now the height that I want to grab here is my step height times almost two. So let's grab this one, copy that, and let's multiply this by 1.95. And the reason I've set it to 1.95 and not 2 is to make sure we have a proper overlap. If I look at my uh, back turn here, and I look at its bounding box, it kind of overlaps just a bit. So we make sure we have a proper cut. Now there's only one last thing I need to do to make this work properly. And that is by actually taking my cutting shape and making it a little bit deeper. So we don't apply its UVs to our actual shape because I don't want that. Let's take a transform node here. Over here where we have our divide. 
plug that in. And I'm going to set um, the name here to inset inward for UVs. Then let's grab the points on the inside of our shape. So that would be the inside of our shape here, points five, three, and one, or one, three, and five. And I'm going to offset them in X by 0 0.1. I need to make sure I apply this to points, not primitives. And that will make sure that it's offsetting this cutting shape just a bit forward. We won't have anything there to cut anyway, so this will be fine. And then if we cut the other shape with that, let's have a look at that. Then it will overlap there and no longer transfer its UVs from this shape to the other one. So this is what the result will do, right? If I don't offset it, it will transfer the UVs. If I do offset it, it won't. So that's fine. And then when I actually apply this as a Boolean, cut out that bottom section here. There we go. Now we actually have a proper cut. So this is a bit of a complex Boolean math here that I did in order to create this uh, shape. But as a result, we now have a proper back turn. And if I start putting these pieces together, it will look good. So let's run this through a clean node, just in case. Because we did do quite a few Boolean cuts here, and I think a clean node might be warranted. Make sure we properly fuse everything. And then, um, let's make sure we name this one as well. So this will be cut half block from bottom. And then we can start plugging these up together. So we're almost done assembling our basic staircase. All right. So at this point, we now have all of our pieces assembled. We have our landing. We have our staircase segment with proper UVs. And over here on the right, we uh, have our back turn. So let's go ahead and stick these together and position them properly. So if we look at their positioning, um, let's grab a merge node and let's plug them together and then we can deal with the offsets. So first, let's plug together all these blocks and that will look something like this. And what I want to do here um, is position first our first staircase segment. Now I'm going to make these stairs counterclockwise so at this moment, this step is actually in the wrong orientation. Let's go up here to the top where we have our straight steps per flight and straight bottom. And I'm going to rotate these ones 180 degrees. So let's do this one first. And then you'll notice that our cutting is wrong. So if we rotate this one as well, then now it should be properly flipped. All right. So with that set up, let's look at our grid where our base level is. And at the moment, this seems to be looking fine. Our steps are starting right here at the bottom. Then next, let's grab our back turn and let's position that one so it sits right there at the top of our stairs. Let's create a transform node. Plug it in here. And I'm going to call this one raise back turn. So for that, we need to actually create a reference um, from this node up here, from our Boolean. Let's create a null for that. Let's call this one bottom steps or straight steps. Let's make that blue. And then let's create a spare input link. And then next, let's position this one so it's right at the top of these stairs. Let's type bounding box, negative one, comma, D, Y, max. 
Now as a result, our back turn, because its pivot was located on the grid right there, should position itself nicely at the top of our steps. Then now we need to create the other uh, steps, right? That go up from here. So let's create a transform node here. Plug that in. Let's call this one rotate steps. And I'm going to rotate these 180 degrees in Y, like so. And then I want to raise them up. So these sit at the top of this section here. Let's create another spare input, in this case on our rotate steps node. And then grab our raise back turn node. And then plug that one in. So for that one, we can use the same expression. Let's grab our bounding box Y max. And let's plug it into our rotate steps as well. So if you do that properly, then now this node is going to reference the original staircase position. And that node, rotate steps, is going to reference the um, back turn, right? So like this. Let me just position these so they make a bit more sense. And the last, we just need to deal with the landing. So for that one, I'm going to create another transform node. Let's uh, create one here. Let's call this one raise landing to top. Let's create another spare input. Reference the rotated steps in this case. And then again, let's grab the bounding box expression, copy that over, plug it in over here. And then I just want to raise this one up by one stair step height. So let's copy our step height plus that. All right, so with that, this part should be set up. Now, I do suggest we test it first before we continue and wrap up this part of the lecture, right? Um, let me grab these nodes quickly, give them a color so they stand out a bit better. All my transform nodes, I'm going to color light uh, yellow. And all of the original shapes, I'll color those bright yellow. So uh, we can better identify our nodes here. Then, over here, let's grab our parameter interface. And let's change the height of our steps a bit. So um, if I change my floor height to, let's say, 4, it's going to create less steps, right? If I set it to 5.8, it will create significantly more, including more back turns here. Let's widen the stairs next. Let's say 2. That works. If we make the back turn bigger, ah, something isn't quite right here. It seems something is being offset. So we need to double check what's going on here. So let's go over to our rotate steps node. And what I need to do here is change the pivot location in X. Because as you might recall, if we change the size of our landing or our back turn, um, the staircases are no longer centered around the center of our grid. And if we rotate, by default, we will rotate around grid center. So this will be offset. We need to make sure we rotate around the center of this object, its centroid. We can do that very simply though. Just type centroid zero D underscore X. If we do that, then now that should be correct. Okay. So let's uh, just finish testing this. Let's say we set this back to two, make the landing a bit bigger. Again, it will make your steps very thin if you do that. But if you change, say, the depth of your staircase, you won't really see much of a difference. So this is a bit of a user control. But at least everything is proportionate and it should be linked up so it doesn't disconnect. But okay, 
at this point we are almost done so i'm going to save my tool here just in case save my scene and um, next let's set up the copying system because uh, we still need to actually have this thing duplicate up based on the amount of floors that we have and that's relatively simple so let's move this up a bit and let's create a new net box down here so let's set this up i'm going to call this one copy staircase um, and scale based on floor height something like that now let's have a quick look at the example file um, so over here what we're going to do is we're going to take this element then we have a line that's per floor right so this is the floor height and then it has a certain amount of points based on how many staircases we need but we don't need that last point so we're going to delete that one then we're going to apply some basic normal and scale variables that we need over here including a scale for the height and that one's going to be um, proportionate based on the height of our actual floor and the height of our actual staircase module so we can normalize that and then fit it in between these different uh, points we're going to copy it up for every floor and then finally we can copy our staircases onto those so that will fit perfectly inside our building okay so let's get started on this let's create a line swap over here and i'm going to call this line swap the floor height line now this node is going to serve as the spawn points for our staircases and it's going to sit exactly between two layers of our floors so what i want to do is to have it point straight up which it's already doing and then i want to set the height to be the exact height of one floor so i'm going to grab my floor height over here copy that and plug it into the length so now if i take my floors over here for example you can see that we have the line and it's sitting right between our floors now let's take our floors and let's make them a little taller let's say we make them 12 units tall again now as a result we have more space in between our floors and then if i grab my staircase element over here and i add that to my template with shift and you can see that it sits in between but it doesn't reach right so we'll need more spawn points to compensate in this case we probably need three spawn points so let's set this one to four points because like i mentioned we are going to delete the top point over here but keep all the other ones now i would like to set up this expression first and then we'll deal with removing that last point the expression i'm going to use is basically going to take our floor height it's going to measure this staircase and depending on its height we are going to fit this one in between this layer here a certain amount of times now we already scale our staircase because we determine its height based on the amount of steps and if i lower my floor height by just a little bit like say 11.9 then this element will become a lot taller and now it could technically only fit about two of them in between these two floors so as a result this one should return only three points and only have two spawn points so let's set up this expression here first let's again grab our floor height copy that and then let's plug it in here i'm then going to take the height of my merge node over here which i've called merge staircase elements and i'm going to plug it in as a spare input link so let's create a spare input on our floor height line plug that in and then let's divide our floor height by the bounding box of our merge node so we're going to say negative one comma d underscore y size now as a result we have a value of two because two pieces can fit in between this layer but we need three spawn points so let's take our expression 
And let's first round it to its closest integer. So we're going to say round. Now, because this is a um, integer expression, it will already by default round to the closest integer. But what I want to do now is actually add one value to it. And I don't want that to mess with the rounding. So just in case, you know, I'm going to round it first and then I'm going to add plus one. So by adding plus one, we make sure we have that extra point at the top. So we have the correct amount of spawn points for our stairs down here. And the top one we can just ignore. So let's do that. Let's create a delete node next. We're going to call this one delete last point in range. Let's color it red. And under its entities, I'm going to delete points. I'm going to set it to range. Select one out of one. But then for the pattern, I'm going to only select the last point. And we can do that by making that both the start and the end point. So in this case, I'm going to grab this dollar sign N here, which again is the total amount of points that we have in this uh, range. And I'm going to add it to the start. Now, as a result, we have deleted the last point. And we could have also done this in VEX if we wanted to. Uh, for example, we could have created a wrangle node. Let's say we quickly demonstrate that. And then what we want to do is we want to take the total amount of points, which in this case is three. So we can say um, n points for input zero, minus one because ultimately we have three points, but our last number is uh, number two. So we need to subtract one, right? So we get two and two. Then I can say if this expression is equal to our current point number, like so, then we basically remove it. So we can use remove points. And then we need to specify which point we want to remove, and that's the current point. So we can say zero for the current geometry, then comma, and then add pt num. And that basically will give you the current point number to delete in this iteration of the wrangle. If you do that, you also remove that last point. So this will do the same thing, except this is done in a wrangle node. And this is if you were to do it using a simple delete node. Now, in this case, um, I'm simply going to stick to the delete node. But if you want to use this, go ahead. I will uh, delete this node for now, though. And let's move on. Then next, we need to set up our spawn points. So we need to give them an orientation, the normal, basically, and an up vector, and then also a scale. Because ultimately, what I'll need to do is make sure that we scale this element here so that it fits properly between our floors. If I don't scale it, it will overlap and it won't properly meet the floor on the next layer. So um, let's set this up. Let's create an attribute wrangle. Plug that in. And let's call this one um, set scale and normals. Then in here, I'm going to create first a vector for the normal so that's going to be inside curly brackets 0 comma 0 comma 1 so that means now we are generating some normals in the positive z direction okay then let's create an up vector as well because it's always good to have an up vector let's say um, v at up equals curly brackets 0, 0,1, 0, and then close. So with that, we now have an up vector as well. And then finally, let's set up the scale. For that, I'm going to say v at scale for the vector scale attribute. So we can independently scale in all three vectors um, equals 1. So by default, it's going to be a value of 1. But then I'm going to modify the y scale, so the scale in height. And to do that, we can say v at scale 
dot y, so the second value, equals, and then I'm going to link that up to an expression. So let's create a parameter for that. Let's say um, y height. And let's expose that. So now I can specify the height of my scale over here. And you can see it reflected down here. And then next, what I would like to do is first copy our staircases into place so we have something visual to see and to compare to our floors here. And then I'm going to set up a little measuring system to compare the height of the actual staircase element, this one, to the height of our line segment itself. One individual segment, not everything, but one segment. So if I do that, I can actually extract the amount that I need to scale each of these spawn staircases so they fit properly in between the layers. Let's um, set this up and we'll see how it works. Let's create a copy the points node first. I'm going to plug it in up here so we grab our staircase element and let's plug it into our spawn points. So as you can see, we now have two staircases between our layers, just like how we had two spawn points. So we're basically copying that staircase onto both of these points now. Um, but that still leaves us with the spacing. And to demonstrate that properly, I have to make sure that this floor height line here sits on top of one of our floors, because otherwise it won't properly position itself. Now, this is going to be a temporary node uh, so we can preview our staircase position but let's grab a transform node here let's plug it below our copy to points node i'm going to make this one red temp offset and then let's give this one a translate y value based on the floor depth copy the floor depth let's plug it up here and now our staircase will sit on top of where our floor is going to be. Or at least it will intersect it by one step height. So that works pretty good. And then let's have a look at what it does up here, where our next floor is. And as you can see, it doesn't quite line up. If we look at this other floor, it doesn't meet at the exact level. And also, at our floor below here, this isn't exactly one step height. It's close but not quite right. Now let's see what happens if I change the height of my floors. Let's set our floor height to 8.5. Now if we do that, then as a result, we have less steps, but our floors are lower and we still have a pretty close match. But as you can see, this has changed now too. And that's directly related to the fact that our staircases don't actually scale yet. So let's see what happens if we take our scale value inside of our set scale and normals node and we bring this down just a bit. If we bring it down just enough, it will start to match up with our layer above. So just a little bit more around there should do. Yeah. And then down here, where our staircases meet up, this should also line up just right. Each of these steps should be about the step height. So that's what I want to do in order to make these things line up. And then if we want to apply that to our entire building, all we have to do is add a copy node in here, copy and transform, and just offset this set up for every floor. So for that, we can simply copy a copy floors node from somewhere else in our network. Let's say we go over here where we have our staircase shaft middle. Copy that. And we're going to plug it in down here below our set skill and normals node. With that, we now have staircases that go all the way up to the roof. So that looks quite right. Okay. So now let's set up a system so we can actually make this automatic because we don't want to set this by hand, right? We don't want to scale these things by hand. We want it to just happen on its own. 
Now what I want to do is measure how high one of these flights of stairs is, even if we have multiple. Now to do that, I'm going to grab my floor height line here, and I'm going to carve it up so we have two primitives instead of one, because we have two edge segments here. I just want to split it at each point. And we can do that using a convert line node. Let's create one of those. I'm going to plug it in. Now the nice part about the convert line salt is that it already computes the length of each of these segments, each of these primitive lines. And it outputs it here as the rest length. So if I grab this and I plug it into my wrangle, I can then retrieve that value from one of these two primitives. So let's do that. In this case, I'm going to plug it into input tree. And then on the left, I'm going to add a dot to this line, which means I can pull another line from it, right? And then I'm going to plug it into input two. So it should look like that. So let's go to the set scale and normals node to the Y height value. And I want to retrieve first the length that I'm getting from my convert line node over here. So that means we want to grab this rest length attribute. Let's copy this, the name of the attribute. And then in here, I'm going to first create a primitive expression. So let's type prim. I want to reference input two, which if we look at the node is zero, one, two. So this one. Then because this is an expression in a H script style, not VEX style, we need four arguments. The first one is the input. The second one is the primitive number that we want to grab in this case. So that will be primitive zero. And we're doing that because there will always be a primitive zero to sample. If there's only one staircase, there will only be one line. Therefore, there will be a primitive zero. Then the next argument, we add our rest length attribute. And then finally, we need to specify index zero. So like that. If we do this, then it will evaluate as an expression by default, and it will retrieve the height of that line. And then next, let's go ahead and divide this by the bounding box of the staircase element. So that's this one here, this node up here. And that means that this will return a scale value for us. Let's go ahead and um, type in bounding box one, because we need to grab input one in this case. And then D underscore Y size. Now by default, what this is going to do, if we look at the result of that, is it is going to scale our staircases, but it's going to scale them so the bottom of this element sits right on top of the top of that element. And that's not quite right. This is too much scaling. It's now too small. So to fix that, we just need to subtract two step heights from um, the total height of this element. So we can take this part, wrap it inside some brackets. And then I'm going to say, subtract the step height from up here. So let's plug that in. And then we need to multiply that. If I just grab this, I want to multiply that by two. So two step heights. And if we do that, then now it should position itself exactly in the right place. Let's grab our template again for the floors, and we should be able to see the result. So now it should line up pretty much perfectly. If we go to the top floor, again, this should be just right. Okay. At this point, our staircase is scaled properly and it's sitting properly in between our floors. We can now go ahead and copy it into place. 
Now this code looks a little bit different than the um, example file I was showing you earlier, but it effectively works the same way. So we're going to go with this. Let's take our staircase and let's start copying it onto our staircase spawn points. Now for that, I'm going to create a new copy to points node. So over here we have it for the um, staircase shaft, right? Let's grab this node and let's copy it over to the right. And I don't want to have a line all the way up to the top. So I'm going to add a new dot down here, plug it in there. And as for this um, collision setup here, I'm just going to move this down a bit. In fact, I'm going to grab all of this, move it down just a bit. And I'll add a merge node in here in a minute. So let's grab our new copy to points node up here. Let's pull it over here to the right. And for these two, I'm going to give them some names. So the one on the left is the copy to points for the staircase housing. And the one on the right is going to be the copy to points for the staircase collision shape. We'll actually have another one for this for the detailed version with the bevels in a minute. Then let's grab this line and let's plug it into our copy to points node over here, which just to make sure we name all of these, um, let's call this one the copy to points steps for floors. Okay. And it should now match our housing, except that our housing is rotated, as you might recall. Because uh, when I first created these, I made them point in the positive x direction, and they should have been pointing in the positive z direction. But uh, we already discussed this. It's just a simple fix. We can use this rotate orientation node here. Copy that. And let's plug it in below our steps for floors. Copy the points node. So if we do that, now our steps are inside of our housing, and they line up. And they should line up with all the floors. If I go and scale this, let's say I give it a different height, let's say floor height of five. We now have one step between each floor and it still lines up. And this will apply to any height, unless you go too low, in which case it will still line up, but well, the player won't be able to walk in between this. Okay, this height would be too small. I think we need at least three meters high for the floors for this to work properly. But other than that, it should work just fine. And that's what this is for, actually. It helps uh, the player navigate the stairs. So let's set the height to 3.5 for now. And let's hook up the rest. So right now we have our collision over here. This is the simple shape without any kind of beveling, right? Let's grab a merge node. Let's plug these together. So now we have our collision. If we hide our template for our stairs, all set up. Then next, let's deal with the um, beveling of this shape. Now, I mentioned before that if you have a bad piece of geometry, a bevel can break your shape. Now, I think I have secured this one enough that it won't break. Now, if it does do that, you'll get a very large polygon, probably on one of the edges or corners of this, um, that extrudes really far out into nothing. If that happens, you can always go ahead and disable that bevel. I haven't seen this happen since I made some adjustments to my code in 1.1. But if it does happen, then you can disable the bevel node that we're going to add here. So I'm going to copy this bevel node here and our triangulate floors node. Let's copy those both. Let's plug those in below our transform. So if we do that, then now we are going to add some bevels to our stairs, which will look, well, just a bit better, really. And then we're going to triangulate this well, so we get some proper geometry. And the reason I put the triangulate and the bevel here is so if I copy it into place, 
it won't have to bevel additional geometry, which is a bit faster and potentially a bit more secure. I'm always a little suspicious about the bevel node, but I just know that if the geometry is somehow not right, it can cause bad geometry. So I'd rather put it earlier in my network before I make all kinds of copies and so forth. Then here on the left, let's copy this, um, copy the points node again, make a copy down there, and I'm gonna plug it in to our triangulate down there. Let's rename this one to um, steps shape. Okay, so at this point, this is all set up. Let's hook it up to the bottom here with a color node and then we'll be done. So let's grab this color node Let's plug it into our copy the points. And let's grab a merge node. And I'm just gonna plug these together, like so. Grab this hide staircases switch, so we can hide it if we want to. Plug it up there. Maybe wrap it inside this netbox as well. And let's see about the color. If I look at this. Let's make our staircases uh, pure white, so they're really bright, right? That will make them stand out quite nicely. And then at the end of our network, um, considering we already plugged up all of our other collisions, I think this should be working. So let's look at the output of our node. And there we go. We now have a working functional staircase in our building. If we go inside, you'll see we have a door at every floor and we can now control it as well. So if I grab, say, my door position, um, let's see, let's grab our stairwell door, set it to the left. There we go. So it covers the landing, right? As was the idea with the, um, the core setup that we created before. So this part here and then let's try out some of our other settings. So I'm gonna make this a little bit deeper, make our landing a bit bigger. If you want to look at the staircase on its own, of course, you can always just look at that, make sure it works in our geometry without problems. Then um, let's try out making it a bit wider or a bit deeper. Okay. So at this point, I think we can safely say our staircase should be working. Let's bring this over into Unreal, test it out one last time, and we should be done. And at that point, um, this video will be over. So let's go ahead and set this up. Let's go and save it out. Save our tool. Make sure, of course, you have the end node selected. Let's go over to Unreal, reload our asset. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Here we go, we have our steps inside and our staircase is complete. Let's grab our player character and let's try it out. Let's say we uh, jump to the bottom using our elevator shaft and then we can walk back up to the top. So our step height is working. As you can see our player character can easily traverse this and because we're using the collision model the low res collision model without the bevels, we have no problem stepping up these steps. So all of that is working just fine. Next to that, let's say we grab this shape and reposition it. So grab it over here, place it there, and let's make it a bit bigger. So let's say I make it um, three by two, right? And let's also give it a slightly bigger back turn and landing to compensate. So over here, I'm gonna give it a landing and back turn of, let's say three each. All right, so let's grab our player character again. And now, well, as you can see, we have our staircase. We don't have a door at this level. but we do here and our floor is lining up just fine. So everything appears to be working. We have a staircase, we have an elevator shaft, and now the only thing that's really left 
on this building is the uh, balconies. So we'll be doing that in the next video. So thank you for watching this video. I know this was quite a long process. I mean, this is a form of procedural modeling that involves thinking about sizes and relations to other pieces. It's not organic as much as it's uh, structural, right? But knowing how to do this and also apply the textures in the way that you want to will allow you to make much more complex systems as well. So um, yeah, you did a very good job if you got this far. We're almost done with this module. So I congratulate you. I would love to see what you come up with. If you have your own additions or changes that you made to the system. And other than that, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It always helps me out. It helped me grow. And if you have anything to say or you want to show your progress, then leave a comment on the video or join us in the Discord channel. Links are down in the description below because I would love to see what you've come up with. So in the next video, we are going to tackle the balconies over here. So um, we can actually have a proper exterior to our building and not just this um, flat facade. But other than that, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching and have a good one.